Real quick before we get started, we got something really cool we want to tell you about. Magali Villeneuve is a Magic the Gathering artist whose art I'm sure you're familiar with, has a Kickstarter going on right now featuring some of her iconic artwork on beautiful playmats. The Kickstarter offers items like premium stitched edges, hand stamped and numbered playmats, certificates of authenticity, and so much more. Art from planeswalkers like Narset Parter Avails and Liliana Waker of the Dead has been extended to fit the widescreen ratio of the playmat and gives the piece a land landscape you can't get in a card frame. This project ships worldwide, so if you want to get more information, including stretch goals like this double-sided Huntmaster of the Fells playmat, check out the link in the description below. This podcast was also brought to you by Dragon Shield. Use code play to win 5 at the affiliate link down below for 5% off to help support the show. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. I'm Dylan, and this week we're talking about Fallout. Fallout, the video game, is coming to Magic the Gathering in a series of products, a set and some commander decks as well, I think, right? So much. I hope that's correct. I think that's correct. We're going to be talking about all the cards that we think might see play in CDH, or maybe like high power commander. Some of these are a little bit of a stretch, but that's okay. We don't need all stars in CDH for every single format. It would get exhausting. It's nice that we only get one or two little things here and there, but a lot of these cards are still powerful cards, and in the right deck, I think they'll be a lot of fun to play. If I'm being honest, I feel like this is where I want the Universes Beyond product power level to sit. I, I don't want it to take over formats. It would be cool to see one or two of these cards get sprinkled in here and there, but I, I kind of like that they're not trying to push the boundaries. Yes. Now, to be fair, we are wrong all the time, so we may be missing some really obvious stuff, and it'd be super funny later to find out that we missed another Born Upon and wind or something like that which we've done in the past but we were taking our word for it we played a lot of cdh we're going to do our best to hopefully these cards are rated properly should we talk about the rating system i know normally we rate them but i feel like we should like i don't know I, we I, should get a balanced system in place first so we can at least agree what we're when i was walking the dogs today i was thinking we don't really have like an actual what does this number mean and like and like the, the rating we system. need a play to win rating system for our shows i agree so first should we should it still be at a five because sometimes like a rating out of 10 feels a little bit better we're allowed to do decimal points so i think making it out of five means we don't have to remember 10 different things okay. I like we that. only have to remember five things that's also like fancy restaurants too they're out of five stars. they're out of five so yeah, that's like Mich- cdh cards well uh, michelin gives you one star though right the isn't, tire company isn't that how that works with michelin they give you five if it's good i thought i thought if you're a michelin star restaurant they only give you one. Oh, i thought it was you like a, just you're a michelin, michelin five star, star restaurant but i could no, be so wrong i, I think th- i think they do it backwards they have like a golf score where oh. if you have so one Mich- star is good two stars bad two star i uh, or is I it just on and off? Is it star or no star? Are you allowed to get more than one Michelin star? Two guys talk about stuff they don't know anything about. <laughs> That's every single podcast <laughs> ever. We're fitting the theme really well. For me, a five... We're going out of, t- out of five. Five best of the best. Ranger Captain of Eos, Demonic Tutor, Force of Will. These are the best cards. Instant staples in tier one decks. They're going to see five. play in every single deck of that color. Basically, no matter what. A four. This card will see play in CDH, but not all the decks and not the best decks. It'll definitely see play, but in probably some decks, fringe decks, tier two decks, every once in a while in a tier deck, but it's not going to be the best card ever. But you'll see it pop up in multiple different commanders, a, though. I think yeah. that's still a key of a four is that it's not exclusive to one commander. Yes, I agree. Four are still playable, but they're not definitive all-star staples. Agreed. A three is maybe. It could see play. It looks like another card in specific decks. It's something per chance. Overall, it's a it's a medium. It's a it's a coin flip of a card. For me, a three is it could, it could not. I wouldn't be surprised either way. So what if a three was this card goes in like one deck? Like what it's is really that? an all-star in one deck? Yeah. I still think that's a three. That's a three. Okay, so it's all part of three. I think that's still all part of free, three. If it's an all-star in, ooh, that's close. I think it's that's still a three. If it's an all-star in one specific deck, just because we could be wrong... We could be wrong in there, and the more commanders we get, it could pop up in other decks. So I kind of like three. If if there's a card that we go, oh, this is a Winota card, this is a Magda card, like those cards pop up all the time, something like that is going to be a three. For a two, a two is basically, I don't think this card is playable. I don't think it's going to see play in any decks. It could be tested out in some low-color decks, but overall, not really a CDH card, but still like close enough to be a pet card, close enough that it's not going to tank your win percentage, close enough that like... 
uh, it's not going to be ridiculous for you to play it, but I'm not positive it's actually any good. For me, twos are going to be cards that people will want to test, but we kind of already know are going to be bad. Yeah. Like, they're close. They look like it, but it's still leaning. But, uh, the coin flip, you're going to get a tails more than a heads. That's uh, Tails means bad for me. So yeah. <laughs> it's, gonna, it's more often, more likely than not, not going to be it, but it yeah. could be. These cards are similar to other cards we already have, but are obviously less powerful more, than maybe more specific less powerful only in certain situations spells. a lot of bounce spells bounce that spells. we see printed now will probably fall into the two category and then a one not good cards bad i don't think it'll see play i'll give it a one because we're if we're talking about it that means we've seen some chatter about it and we disagree with the chatter or there's a scenario in our head that we could conceive there's a christmas land where it'll be great but outside of that christmas land it's not going to be fantastic ones are overall i don't think worth trying but ones still mean that Hey, we're thinking about it. You know I'm what I mean? Gonna, it's still on the radar. Yes. I'm going to institute a zero into the scale, too. Absolutely. And the zeros are for the rare cases where we're like, why did one of us put this on the list and no one else agrees with it? A zero is a full confidence. It will never see play in any reasonable CDH deck. Yes. Hard confidence. This whole list of zeros. <laughs> It's not. All right. That's the rating system. We've gone over the rules of the assignment. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right. So here's the woo of Wooberg here. Really the woo, not the woo, because that's blue white. Woo. Oh, yeah. That is that is obviously two letters. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> okay. All right. So Codsworth Handy Helper is our first card. I actually know this character. Ooh. I've played Fallout 4 for two minutes. All right. We should talk about our experience with Fallout oh, so people know okay. if you know anything about this. For me, zero. Zilch. I know nothing nothing about this game i played fallout 4 for two minutes so i created a character and i met codsworth and then i walked out of my building and that's as far as i got as far as you got i have yeah. a question is yes. fallout 4 the fourth game in the series or is it just called fallout 4 so i think that fallout 4 is actually the fourth one because i know that there was like a fallout 3 i think the one after fallout 4 was fallout 76 and that's not the 76th one that's not the 76th one no because i have another question games like final fantasy this didn't it start on like Final Fantasy 7 or am I completely wrong on that? Do you know anything about Final, Final Fantasy? Final Fantasy was just like 7 was just the best one. Is I that think? just the best? Was there a Final so Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6? Sometimes with the Japanese games, like this happened with Fire Emblem. Yeah. There were six Fire Emblems that came out before any was released in America. Okay. So Fire Emblem 7 in America was called Fire Emblem. But, but really, Japan, it was the seventh one. It was actually one. the seventh one. Okay. I think a lot of that happened with Final Fantasy, but I can't be specific about that. I think Fallout has just been a staple of gaming since the original like Xbox and original PlayStation consoles. Although I have no idea what the original Fallout would have looked like. Not a clue. Yeah, I will say due to pop culture, I have some ideas of what Fallout is. And then obviously I have seen the spoilers and stuff. Yeah. So I know the Mr. Pibb guy. Yeah, and what, the, the Fallout he, character. I don't know who he is or what he is i think it's some sort of like um here's what i want to guess like the government give you like an image of like here is it's like a propaganda here, it's a propaganda image. thing yeah. i think it might be like a propaganda type thing i'm it not sure if that's is, true so the way that i've seen it is that that character is what displays like all of your attributes and your stats it's okay. so like your strength and then he's like this and Understood. For those listening, I'm I'm making the bulkiest arms. All yes. the, everyone and your muscles are huge, yeah, bulging out of exactly, your shirt, so yeah. big. I'm <laughs> <laughs> exactly in my chiseled chest. I also know cola. I think there's something Nuka Cola. Nuka Cola is the soda. Yeah. Is that supposed to be like Coca Cola, except they take over the world or something? So it's very true to life, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Corporations taking yeah. over the world. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I have no idea what the actual backstory is, but I do know that they are in a post apocalyptical situation in each one of these games. That much I have gathered, mainly from the cards, though. I, I can tell that it is a post apocalyptic. And also, we're bringing artifacts back a lot. There are a lot of reprints that like bring artifacts back. So I don't know. I know there's like junk stuff. I think people making stuff out of metal into other tools or yeah, something like that. Yeah, junk is a new artifact type where you can sacrifice it to exile the top card of your library and play it this turn. So they're kind of like impulsive draws. Is it this turn or is it until the next end step? Do you know? I don't, um, but let's look it up. Because I feel like that's a little bit different depending on when you can scrap the junk or whatever it's called. Play it that turn is what that it turn, says. Specifically that turn. Activate okay. it as a, as a sorcery. As a sorcery. So only on your turn. Understood. Because yeah. there are some situations where like if you could do it in an opponent's end step, 
untap and then have access to it, but that's not what we're doing. No, exactly. And it still also only says until that turn. So even if you did that on an opponent's end step, it's not the next end step. Exactly. It's not a dress down. Exactly. Understood. Yeah. Okay, that's what we know about so that's Fallout. that's where we're at with Fallout. Basically we have very nothing. minimal knowledge, but I think we're going to learn a lot based off reading these cards. Okay, should we talk about the first and only what card of yes. the set? Codsworth Handy Helper is two and a white for a 2-3 legendary artifact creature robot. It says commanders you control have ward two. You can tap it to add white white you can only use that mana to cast aura or equipment spells you can also tap it to attach an aura or equipment you control to target creature you control but only at sorcery speed yeah so this does a couple things that are not normally great in cdh and i understand that but this does a lot of things that are really good for equipment decks and i've seen arden decks around the fringe i wonder if this is a card that could go into an arden deck the problem is is that its second ability is already something that arden does yeah that's true so really it's just a three mana mana dork for equipment in that deck then so i think it's just going to depend on how many equipment you want i think giving your arden ward two that's is helpful also very helpful though too i think the, the biggest issue with these kind of decks is that you get a target on your back because you have every single equipment in your deck going to one creature so you just get blown out very easy but this really helps mitigate that yeah this definitely doesn't do anything at a great rate but it does three things at an at a reasonable rate it's a coligan's command of sorts so i, I <laughs> you're absolutely you know what right. i mean like it just does everything a lot of stuff that that style of deck would want at kind of a shitty rate so I think it's close. I think it's in the conversation. I think Arden players are probably looking at this card. Ultimately, they may decide no. I'm going to start. I'm going to give this one a two. I'm going to give this one a two as well because yeah. I'm a little skeptical. Arden already does, like I said, Arden already does the main most powerful thing that this thing does. Um, and until maybe Noel, maybe, no, is that the name of the Boros Equipment Commander? It's not Noel. It's Cole. Cole. Cole, I think. That is his name. Cole, the Forge Cole. Master. Yeah, that's it. Like maybe this is something that you want in Cole because that's another deck that is very susceptible to removal and yep. can't partner with like a blue crown or something like that. So I definitely think if equipment gets enough push and gets enough shit eventually i do think it's close to a cd strategy not specifically a voltron strategy i don't mean that but some sort of stone blade strategy using equipment for value getting in with damage eventually if we get enough pieces i think it might get there and i think this could be a part of that i'm not positive we need a new umazawa's jite and i don't think we're gonna get equipment to the level of jite again yeah i like, agree full stop yeah i think i'm with you there if we do it's something more like an ember cleave yeah so like it would have to be of a specific color which i guess white would be pretty well positioned to get something like that but i don't know it's not it's it's a two right now with the potential to be a three in the future yeah but that's the ceiling that's definitely the ceiling for this one moving on the next one is the card that i'm the most excited for this is curie emergent intelligence oh yeah baby this one's great this is one in the blue for a one three legendary artifact creature robot whenever it deals combat damage to a player you draw cards equal to its base power and for one in the blue you can exile another non-token artifact creature you control to have curie become a copy of that exile exiled creature except it has when this creature deals combat damage to a player draw cards equal to its base power hey google show me a picture of phyrexian dreadnought so this is a one minute 12 12 artifact creature that we can just have it enter play in response to the sacrifice trigger we can exile it to curie have curie be a 12 12 and now try to get in to draw 12 cards yes so this is a i don't want to say a lot of hoops because it's just the one it's literally a two card combo it's a two card combo that what it does is makes your commander a 12-12, and every time it connects, draw 12 cards. That's pretty good. Not only is that now a two-turn clock on a player, yeah. but you're also drawing a ad nauseum amount of cards, technically. Uh, after two, yes, for sure. Once yeah. you get in that 20 range, I think you're drawing an ad nauseum, ad nauseum level of cards. Yes, if you can get in twice. Yeah. This is one of the commanders that, that we put together. The de name of this deck is called Because You Know I'm All About That Base, About That Base 12 Power. I will say also, this one is more like a one-card combo than a two-card combo. A one-card combo in commander means that your commander and the one card is the combo because you always have your commander 
commander access. You have it in your command zone always. It's always in your hand. When we say one card combo, we mean you need to find one card and then your commander, which is always right there in your hand technically. So that's why it's a one card combo, but it's not exactly combo. It just draws you the cards. And there's also some other things that are close to Phyrexian Dreadnought in artifact creature size that we're also maybe playing in this yeah, deck. Yeah, I also put in Phyrexian the other one. I also put in Phyrexian Soul Gold. I actually, I, yeah. This is going to be so hard for you so to say. So hard, yeah. <laughs> I also put in Phyrexian Soul Gorger. So it's a lot worse because I can't do it repeatedly so easily. You have to sacrifice creatures on your upkeep. Is it repeatedly? Oh, oh it gives it, it's the ability to have to sack. upkeep. Yeah. Yeah, so it like, becomes that thing forever. It becomes the thing. It doesn't just have the base power and toughness of it. So it's going to have this ability on it, which is why the Phyrexian Dreadnought is so good. Curie isn't entering the battlefield, so I'm not going to have to sacrifice it when it hits. Outside of that, the deck is kind of just like a mono blue artifact deck that just has a couple ways to draw big chunks of cards. Yeah, so I put in Relic's Roar, Ooh. which is one mana turn a creature into a 4-3 dinosaur. That's its base power, so it's a one mana draw four. Well, and one mana. Yeah, one mana, because you don't have to use the ability to activate something exactly, else. You just yes. make your commander. You, okay, you sure. attack with Curie. They say no block. And then before damage, you turn it into a 4 3 to draw, draw four, four cards. cards. Quick. That's yeah. a, it's Ancestral Recall, but better. Yeah. This it's... card's Ancestral Recall. Put it in the short. 100%. <laughs> I also put in Serpentine Ambush, which is the same thing, but it's a two mana instant that turns her into a 5 5. Woof. I had in Soul Artifact in, but the problem is one of the other commanders we're going to be playing in the set gameplay video can steal things. Uh -huh. And I didn't just want to give that deck the ability to have a 5 5 that can get in to draw five cards. Yeah. I'd rather have these like quick little bursts of card draw instead now the Frexian dreadnought situation i'm playing kellogg i can still take that shit. oh yeah you right? still can yeah. but i'm i'm, I'm gonna, I'm try gonna to... worry about that when i come to it the main issue right off the bat that i see with this one is you have to connect on damage frequently and yeah it has no trample no evasion you know what i mean nothing like that there are some artifacts that you could put onto him to give him like give him the the uh like evasion flying abilities or flying, like yeah. that I don't know if they're worth it, too much mana, stuff like that. I think a lot of times with there being three players, like Tim the decks are able to get in. So I think you'll have the opportunity to get in at players here and there. There's a, an artifact that I'm not sure if you put in this list that we'll talk about later, actually, that I'm wondering if you have any interest in playing. It's the one with Flash, and it's the equipment that says when it enters, equip it to something and give it Shroud. And then for that, just the end of turn, and then it gains unblockable after that. I think it's on our list right now. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, it's a new one. It's a new card that came out on in this set. Oh, let's talk about it right now. Silver Shroud Costume. I think that's it. This is two mana for a flash equipment. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. That creature gains Shroud until end of turn. Equipped creature can't be blocked. Is this something that you want in this deck? This might be. If you're just looking Ooh, for another way is. to protect your commander. Extra protection and the unblockable. With this one specifically, the unblockable, that unblockable specifically, translates pretty directly good, yeah. to cards, like a lot of them. Yeah, maybe I should swap out Gilded Drake because I don't want to give someone a 3-3 three, three flyer. Ooh, a block. Yeah, you don't want to give someone a blocker. I'm not sure, but I think this card probably should go in the deck. Yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. I don't know if Gilded Drake is a swap, like but something maybe. Something's probably the swap for that, yeah. Because the rest of this deck is basically an infinite mana Urza high artificer deck yeah. worth a ton of different ways to try to make infinite mana and just piece wins together based off the cards that you draw. Yeah, a bunch of artifact tutors to help you find the one ring for more card draw or any of you. Are you playing artifact combo pieces too, like Isochron Scepter or anything like that? Yeah, I'm playing Isochron Scepter as a way to get infinite mana. I'm playing every single way to try to get the one ring and to untap the one ring as well and leaning on that so like i'm playing the keys we get to play torpor orb in this deck Ooh. because now phyrexian dreadnought is just a one man at 12 12 sure, yeah that's also fine dress down also does the same thing that's a legacy deck for a uh Stifle Knot, Stifle Knot or something is like a fringe legacy deck that uses Dress Down. Maybe you can do that too. Yeah, exactly. So Dress Down is also just a great card that I've been loving recently. Yeah, there's a couple tweaks I got to make to this deck at this point. We still have a couple days before we're playing it, but I, I kind of really like it. I yeah. think it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know how good it's going to be. We got to rate this card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's rate it. I think it's a two. You think it's a two? Realistically, it's a two, but on the fun scale, it's a five. Yeah, I think I want to give this one closer to a three. I think this one could be reasonable it's really only as a commander i don't see it in the 99 in any situation right there's not enough synergies that you want to play in the 99 and mono blue is pretty limited and your win cons stink your win cons are horrible really not good problem. three card win cons are terrible you have a ton of ways to draw cards which will help you find them but you waste a lot of slots on shitty three card combos and that's not great you're probably right with the two 
I want to give it a three because I think it's cool. I'm going to stick with 2.5. I think what's going to happen is you're going to make infinite mana with this deck a ton and just never have anything to yeah, do with it. Yeah, and then not be able to close the game out. And then someone, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then and you're like, draw someone, 12 cards and then pass. Someone has a way to bounce Curie or worse, Gilded Drake it, and then they have the 12 12 that can get in for damaging cards. So your sleeve is rolled up. You want to just. Hey, I have a question. Give it to me. What color is this shirt? Oh, we talked about this in the last podcast. Oh, yeah. What did I say before? I you think said this... it was green, and I'm thinking you're right because I went in. You said I, it was gray, right? I put a picture of it in the last podcast, and it's definitely more green than gray. I would say it is a. I don't know the exact green because like that green that's coming out the slime of its nose, that's also green, and those are way different colors. Yeah, this is like more of a lime green. I would say the slime coming out of the mouth. I want to say it's like a blue green, but it's not like a, a sea foam green. It's it's like a dark, a, a dark blue and like a, a dark teal, green. Would like you a say? dark teal. What would a dark teal be called? Because I still feel teal is a teal is a little bit more bluish. I think, but that's a little bit more greenish. More, yeah, maybe this is just blue green. I would say that crayon. I would say green blue. How many of the sixty four? colors in a 64 color crayon box could you name two green blue great okay the next card is rad storm yes. this is an awesome storm this is three and a blue for an instant it says storm and proliferate so storm broken mechanic very very good proliferate proliferate not as broken of a mechanic not as broken as a commit as a mechanic the first thing i'm thinking which is bad right off the bat infect counters Yes. Get someone, what's that one draw card? Everyone gets a poison counter. Oh, yeah. Some, uh, something to Phoresis. It's on the screen right now. Yeah. Some sort of storm deck where you play that and then you play a bunch of rituals. And then once you get the storm to nine, cast this as your 10 spell. Or I don't know the math since they already have a poison counter, maybe one less. And it's like a tendrils of agony. You know what I mean? Like cast 10 spells, win the game. Maybe this is your finisher. You have to have a bunch of cards that give everyone one poison card efficiently that one that draws you card is i think the best one that i can think of i think so too i'm trying to look it up to confirm if it gives everyone a I'm poison almost counter positive oh, or man. just target player a poison oh, if, it was, if that card says target player that card stink but i i think it's each player each opponent i mean prologue to phoresis it is each opponent each opponent yeah. yeah so i don't know if original atraxa is also something that like that that card has always been bad in CDH. This is another one that I'm really not sure, but Storm is a broken mechanic and Infect is a broken mechanic. If we can if we can do something there, we got a powerful deck, but nothing like this quite exists in CDH exactly. Blue cards that say Storm on them, my brain is getting like all fires are There's got to be something, rain, right? Yeah. There's got to be something. I don't know if it's Infect, it could be something else. I don't know what other Maybe you're a, a, a Tevish shot deck and you ultimate Tevish really oh, quickly. You're just you trying to like ultimate the way that way. Maybe you're, I don't know, Ishai. Make your Ishai real, real big or something. I, I, probably I not. I have no idea you what, know, it, probably what like, not. this would be good in in that yeah, kind of circumstance. But but. I feel like my I'm tingling. I think Storm is broken. Proliferate sucks, but Storm is broken. And if you can combine it with enough good cards, maybe this is a finisher. It's in that range of two to three. I think it's closer to two. We got another two on our hands. I agree. I would say this is probably... Closer to two, but I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being a one in yeah. CEDH. Because I'm not sure this will see play. For a three, I think I'd be pretty confident that it would see play in some decks. I think that's what I said in the beginning. Yeah. Two, I'm not really sure it'll see play. I just think it looks close. The other thing is that I've been looking into a lot of the energy payoffs recently. Yep. Not good. And there's not a lot of good energy payoffs that I can find. It's hard sometimes because there's a lot of mechanics that were like broken in 60 card and broken in standard. Energy was completely busted in standard. And then for CDH, it just doesn't hold up. There's just not not enough there's not enough payoffs there's not enough actual in a singleton 100 card format there's not enough actual gas for it so i'm not sure which is probably a good thing probably, good probably thing. even way more busted if it had that but okay two i think a two two synth infiltrator is the next card this is three and two blue for a zero zero artifact creature synth it has improvise which is convoke except for artifacts a little bit different convoke can tap for colored pips if you tap a creature this only taps for colorless true i just want to say that and then what it does but otherwise that is yeah you can have synth infiltrator enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except it's a synth artifact creature in addition to its other types the reason why i put this one on the list is one clones have been getting real good in cdh two this can look like a two mana clone in the right deck a lot of artifacts already tap for mana so maybe this is not going to be as helpful for that 
But in a deck, this is going to look like a two mana clone, and two mana clones are the rate. I think it's going to look like a two mana clone more than it's going to be a two mana clone. Yes, that's right. But if you right. want an artifact clone for some reason, I think this is where you want to be. It can only copy creatures, right? Yes, yeah, so, it, so can't, it can't copy the one ring. I'm sorry. I meant a card that is an artifact that is also a clone. It itself is an artifact. It itself is an artifact and turn whatever it turns into remains an artifact if it's it, if it was an artifact if it wasn't an artifact it becomes an artifact it does change it into an artifact yes okay. except it's a synth artifact creature yes so you can find this off of artifact tutors and creature tutors that's a little bit more easier Ooh, yeah, to find like you know what of I mean? invention word of invention something yeah. like that this is another one that looks like a cdh card but i'm not sure that it smells like a cdh card if that makes sense i think this is a 1.5 you for think that it's lower reason. Yeah. interesting okay clones have been really good but i don't think like kinnon is gonna look to add this into their kinnon builds when there's already like f a ton of four mana options that they have they'd rather play i think atraxa is another deck i've been playing atraxa recently and you max out on the three best clones and the clones are really great in that deck obviously i don't think i want this one as the fourth for me it's Phantasmal Image, Flesh Duplicate, Phyrexian Clone? Metamorph? Metamorph, Phyrexian, yeah, Phyrexian Metamorph. Metamorph. Those are the three ones that I think at this point are pretty close to staples in blue decks for me, especially if you're playing Atraxa, Tivid, anything like that, Dockside Extortionist, anything. The fourth one is always a little bit questionable. I don't know that this one's it, but I think it's in like the conversation of like clever impersonator and things like that there's another two mana one the vehicle i think is um, above all of the other four mana ones and even though you can't copy the like, creature that you control with yeah. it it's still as effective for like other dockside extortionists or like it's for the decks that aren't playing atraxa in their command zone but are gonna leverage the fact that there's atraxa in three other command zones potentially. yeah that one's okay i haven't loved that one i like being in control of my cards i want to know my strategy and game plan i just cut mnemonic betrayal from atraxa for a similar reason of like <laughs> yeah i don't care what the ceiling of the card is or how powerful it could be if and now i'm saying this in dockside extortion is the strongest card in the format but if i can control it easily i i don't i'm not as interested in it so the vehicle one i don't love as much but i think you're probably right that the vehicle one's better than this i think it's better than that i mean if i'm gonna play a clone that's gonna feed dockside more it's gonna be that one yeah and if i'm gonna play a clone that doesn't feed dockside i'd much rather have like any of the four mana options before i go into this probably depending on the deck if i'm in a non urza artifact based deck i think i'd like it more otherwise like the artifacts that i'm playing are just gonna feel like i'm paying mana into it instead of actually improvising anything i agree 1.5 for me 1.5 for me as well yeah or like a stack deck there's a stack deck with like a like turn off your trinosphere tap it to cast this and clone something else and then your trinosphere is turned off for your win i don't know i don't know 1.5 oh, 1.7 1.7 1.7 1.7 1.7 1.6 <laughs> because then you have to pass with a tap trinosphere. No, you win the game. It's like a you use like a unless turn, you, you don't because yeah. you just turned off their ability to not interact with you. So now like their force of wills are back yeah. on. I don't know. It's da that's dangerous. Yeah. Let's talk about an actually great card. A good card. Nuclear Fallout. This card is good, I think. This card is awesome. Yeah, this is two black and X for a sorcery that says each creature gets twice minus X minus X until end of turn. Each player gets X rad counters we should read rad counters we should read what rad counters do again let me see if i can guess a rad counter says at the beginning of like your pre-combat main phase you mill a card for each rad counter you have for each non-land that you mill lose a life and remove one rad counter from yourself i, I think, think that's you what it got does. it yeah at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase if you have any rad counters mill that many cards for each non-land you lose one life and lose a rad counter so if you were to give someone a billion rad counters they would die on their pre-combat main phase yeah because it counts instance sorceries yeah and they're just gonna creatures. have they're going to have more than uh, for each non-land spell that they mill over, which is going to be like 50 or 60. They'll lose that much life and probably kill them. This is an infinite mana outlet. This is an infinite mana outlet. If you don't have access to your commander and you're in a dockside loop deck, this is a way to kind of kill your opponents as you pass the turn through them. This is also at the same rate as Languish, which I know is a strange one, but Tivit plays Languish sometimes. And I think this is just better than Languish. Because of the flexibility, at three mana, it deals minus two, minus two. At Languish mana, it deals minus 
minus four, minus four. But at five mana, you can have it get deal minus six, minus six. Which will kill hit. almost everything. It'll get Tivits off the board at that point, which is pretty cool. And a pro to it is it's only two mana value versus four mana value. So if you're playing ad nauseum, you're a little bit better in that direction. You lose a little bit less life. Toxic Deluge. Like, where do you put this next to Toxic Deluge? Still worse than Deluge, I think. But I do think it's close. I think it's like your second option at this point. I think it's equal to Dam in power level. Some decks are going to play it, not a ton, but it's going to be good in those decks. The issue with it also is like milling your opponents can be bad. If they're an Underworld You're Breach or something like damn that. Damn right it can be bad. Like, it can be not good. Now, it's not off like... I don't think milling them is really something that you should ever consider. It's not like like you're not going to like get a good card out of their deck and that screws them over. Like That's not going to happen very often, and it does. A reasonable pilot is going to be able to pivot easily around their cards. So I don't think it's worth thinking about, but like it's more likely that it'll be bad for you than it'll be good for you. I, I think. would agree with that. You're more likely setting up an Underworld Breach, a Yawgmoth's Will, or just giving someone extra fuel as opposed to screwing them over. Right, yeah. So that is negative, but I do still think this will see play in some decks. I think it's a strong three. I think it's a strong three three point five probably yeah a four is kind of like guaranteed to see play in some decks i don't know this is guaranteed to see play in the tivit decks that we're playing languish already. yeah it's I guaranteed think. to be removed from those lists and if there's any other list that's trying to play some sort of mass removal spell like i think this is better than damn now because this doesn't require you to be in white is, is one big thing. And I think the scalability of it is actually massive. Like, if you're playing a commander that has three toughness, you can still use this as a minus two, minus two wrath. I think something like um, Thrasios Tevish Sot comes to mind of like, sometimes this is going to be three mana, yeah. minus two, minus two, protect your command, protect your planeswalker. And then when you need it to be, it's going to wrath the whole board. And since you're probably doing some sort of loop anyway, if someone's got a Dranith Magistrate out and you just happen to have this in your card, I like ways that you can work around Dranith Magistrate that don't involve killing the Dranith Magistrate, because if you flop, it's still there, and it's still stopping other players, right? What I really like about this in Thrasios Tevish, too, is that this is just, if if you need another way to win the game. Yeah. Like you're trying to draw your deck with Thrasios, then you do this, and then that's how you win. So I that's a, I think that's a great application. Yeah, so I think it's a strong three. I think a 3.5 is, is fine. It's not a four. It's not going to be... Uh, you're not going to see this card a ton. Not every deck, not every black deck is going to play this. True. Toxic Deluge. I still think Deluge is better. Just the... The control, the flexibility, the three mana guaranteed to kill anything you want. Yeah, I'm saying this is you know, flexible, but really Deluge, Deluge is, is the better. most flexible. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's close. I think it's actually I think it's in the conversation. I'll agree with you there. 3.5. Let's do it. Vats is the next card. Vats, are you familiar with Vats? I know nothing of it. This is like the combat system that I'm familiar with from Fallout. The Where combat you, system. Okay, yeah, like you get mean? percentages on the likeliness that your shot will hit someone. Okay. And uh, you deal damage based on that. Okay, what's this card do? Vats is two and two black for an instant with split second. It lets you choose any number of target creatures with equal toughness and destroy the chosen creatures. Yeah, so number one off the bat. Wait, there, this has something else. Did you say there's something else that I forgot? Split second. Did you say that? I, don't, I did, did I, say I, that, I yeah. I spaced out. Okay, this card is split second. We're getting split second back. Split second is a broken mechanic. Now, yeah, anytime something says split second, much like Storm, yeah. I'm going to look at it real hard. Right, now we have... I haven't had a ton of CDH cards with split second yet because they're a little bit too specific or a little bit too overcosted, and that hasn't been valued quite enough. The big ones that come to mind are like Angel's Grace and Crossing Grip that are like the closest. Legolas is quick reflexes. That's I a think new one better than really both good. of those. Yeah, actually, that, yeah, yeah, I think you're totally right. Four mana is a lot, and I understand that. And I think that's going to hold this card back from seeing play a lot of the times, but. Split second removal is really something that I'm interested in getting rid of any creature. And the fact that this can sometimes get rid of multiple creatures is going to be huge. I know, right? Like there's so many things that have the same toughness in play. Like if you have Orcish Bowmaster and you're already doing a good job of pinging off the X ones, yep. you can use this to like get rid of multiple X twos and then just really help get in for wins when stacks pieces aren't there anymore. Yeah. Now, like I, like I said, right off the bat four mana, that's like game winning spell cost. That's like what your that's like your win condition. That's like the best thing in your deck. So I think it's limited for that reason, but it's going to be really good in high power. The split second is huge. I think the card is just like a cool, good card. Um, so I'm not sure where it's he's playing CDH, maybe nowhere, but... I don't know. It, just, it seems very interesting to me. I think a lot of the times what's going to happen is that this card is going to really be like a one-for-one -one removal spell yeah. that is 
like sometimes gonna pick up something else that you really don't care about like you're always gonna have one card that you want to get rid of substantially more than any others and then you're not really gonna care at that point if it gets rid of multiple things because there's only one thing you really want gone and at that point four mana is just way too much for something like that yeah i agree like when it's good the ceiling the christmas land is huge when you get to get rid of the collector oof and the timna and and an oppo and an opposition agent and you know holy shit that's really fucking good but the floor is going to be i have this four mana card there's nothing i really want to kill this is dead i think the reality is i'm not seeing collector oof so much anymore that's also true i think just because of the direction that the format's going this is something that i'm wanting less like i'm seeing march of swirling mist getting played less because there's less in play stacks pieces that i need to deal with and i only necessarily need to deal with one of them at a time instead of deal with the whole board yeah i think also and the strength of other permanent types have really grown recently like specifically like i want my removal to be a lot more flexible things like the one ring ristic study i don't want to look at you know creature removal I know we've talked about play more creature removal, but like sometimes you're looking at a sword to plowshare and you're facing a risk study and the one ring and a wish claw talisman and all these things like you wish you could get rid of, but your fucking sword splash doesn't do anything. Yeah, I want more I like more like chain of vapor type removal things. Chain that of are vapor, v- abrupt decay, assassin's trophy, flexible things like yes, that. Yes, that's what I'm looking towards a little bit more. I think this is another two. We've t- all these cards are basically twos, but for me, I think this is another two. I'm thinking this is probably a 1.5. I don't know. This is a Glissa the Trader card. I was going to ask, is this a Glissa card? I think this is pretty close to being a Glissa the Trader card, especially if, I mean, our playgroup doesn't play a lot of counter spells, but if we did, like, this is 100% something I would want to get multiple triggers. Yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. Very good. Very good. We're going to talk about the only green card. This is Rampaging Yao Guai. Yao Guai. Y A O G U A I. Yeah, Yao Guy. Yao Guy. Yeah, this is X and three green for a 2 2 bear mutant. It has vigilance and trample. It enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. And when it does enter the battlefield, you can destroy any number of target artifacts and or enchantments with total mana value X or less. Right, yeah. So this is Meltdown with a little bit of extra stuff for a little bit of extra mana. With a body. So for green instead of red and two extra pips, you get a trampling reach body with plus one, plus one counters. And also you get to hit enchantments. I want to talk Ooh. about how huge it is that you can get rid of a couple of Mystic Remores with this thing. Now, mana intensive for sure. If you're paying, casting four mana to get rid of the Mystic Remora, that's going to sting. But at four mana, is it a zero, zero? So it's a two, two, but it's, it's two, two. five. Okay. If it's four mana to get rid of one thing i thought it's each destroy any number of target with total mana value x or less so like if you want to get rid of one mystic of two mystic remoras you have to pay two into x wait read it again it says when it enters the battlefield destroy any number of target artifacts and or enchantments with total mana value x or less so you can wipe all the zeros by paying x is zero not but good. if you want to get rid of Blood Moon, you have to pay X's three to get rid of Blood Moon and all of the zero mana artifacts. And the zero mana artifacts. Yeah, so like okay. you, no matter what, you're wiping mana crypts and chrome moxes, yeah. but you have to pay more depending on okay. what you're trying to get rid of. This card is worse than I thought. You can get rid of two Mystic Remoras and not trigger them with this. For five mana. To get a... F- Five mana, four, four that gets rid of two things, I think is still pretty good in your mono green decks. I think mono green decks will look at this card, but not all of them will even play it. I think mono green decks are going to rather still play Rex Sage or Manglehorn because this isn't that great to green Sun Zenith into either. So I I kind of would just rather have something like Manglehorn. One, I misread a little bit. I thought if you paid X is one, you destroy everything with CMC one or less. I no, misread it's it. The up not two, good. Yeah. yeah. Not the up two makes this card stink. I think I'd rather play Bane of Progress still. Maybe I give this a 0.5. I'll give it a 0.5 as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We gotta talk about bad cards so we know what good cards look like. There you go, exactly. Here's one. What do you think of inventory management? A red and a white instant with split second. Good. That says, I know, right? Already, I kind of don't care what the text says, but then I kind of do because it says for each aura and equipment you control, you may attach it to a creature you control. Is this good? This is another one where like if, if equipments is good, this is good. 
Besides if, that, I don't know. If Goto was also white, like this is so something I would want. Now, there are Arden lists that play Goto. Obviously, Arden does the equipping for you. If your Arden gets removed and you split second and equip it anyway, maybe this is good. If you're playing Magnetic Theft yeah. in a red-white deck, you want this as well. I think so. I think the addition of like being the split second is going to be huge, especially like if your win condition involves equipping an equipment to a creature... I think I want this as another option to do that. It's with split second, no less. Like, it just yeah. gives you a lot more oomph, a lot more power. If someone just, like, wait before you go to your next phase, kill your Ar your Arden, and you're like, all right, well, my whole fucking turn is wasted now. You go, not anymore. Now, like, you could have a counter spell that could protect the Arden, but having that split second is really huge. It's the same reason why Abrupt Decay is good, that, that uncounterability. But I think this is only going to end up being good if one of the equipment gives your creature some sort of protection. Because mm, okay. otherwise, a removal spell or a bounce spell is still going to blow you out by the time you go to combat and declare an That's attack. That's true. Yeah. Although, this being an... Like, you can still, like, declare an attack and then do this. Yeah. But still, like... After everything resolves, your opponents still have priority. So, like, you can still get blown out. You kind of need, like I said, you kind of need one of these things that give your creature protection. Yeah, overall, it's probably not going to see a ton of play. But I do think Arden decks are going to try it. I just think Split Second is that good yeah. to have as a backup option for your Arden. I think it's going to be a two. Because yeah. even if Arden decks do want it, I don't know how good it's going to end up being. Yeah, I agree. But, again, if you do play Magmatic Theft already, you want this. I agree. Uh, a solid two. Maybe a 1.9. Maybe a one, uh, one point eight five. Trying to undercut me? What's going uh, on here? yeah, I am. One point eight four. I changed my answer. One point eight three. One point eight two. One point eight one. Fuck. All right, you got me. All right. Yes. I can't think of any lower numbers than that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Red Death Shipwrecker is a red and a blue legendary crab mutant. It is a 1-3, and it has alluring eyes. You can tap it to go to creature that an opponent controls. That player draws, but you add a red mana. This is mainly because fucking Red Death is cool, but also... Uh this is a way to yeah, stop. Yeah, it's got those meme <laughs> eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a way to stop a Thoracle. That's Thoracal win condition. After they're Thoracal, make them draw a card. Boom. Oh, yeah. It's a Mana Dork that does and that. And it's a Mana Dork that does it at two mana. And it's, the goading creature isn't nothing. It's and the if you have Orcish Bowmaster, I mean, I don't know. It's the worst Mana Dork of all time. Of all time. Like, that backside, the, the downside to making red mana is such a huge drawback. But, like... I guess it's worth making people attack with creatures that they don't want to, right? I don't know. Like, yes, the card draw is terrible. Very, very awful, bad, not good. I don't know. If you're in, like, a uh, a wheels deck where you're playing a Narset or an Orcish Bowmaster or a Smothering Tithe, then suddenly you're starting to generate some synergies here, and then you still prevent anyone from oh. going for a Thoracle win while you have it untapped, and... Uh, Narset's weird because... Yeah, Narset's weird, Narset's but... weird because they can still get the card, so, like, you have to... It has to be on their turn yeah exactly it has to be on their turn which is one often when you would do it anyway i don't know the fact that it stops thoracles is the only reason why i put it on the list yeah. not stops but just like is a hindrance for a thought oracle win because you can add instant speed make your opponent draw one card after they've exiled their whole library it's interesting it's interesting it's, interesting. it's the risk of giving my opponent's cards it's so is bad just so bad and, and in exchange for a mana is just not a good rate you have a card i have a mana that's not a good rate no and the goading goad, could be real though the goading could be real the goading could be real i just feel like that's another one of these mechanics that gives your opponent's choice yeah. so it gives you the illusion of upside when the reality is eventually it comes back to haunt you now if you're a politicking king or queen this one could be much better if you can say like hey i'm gonna go their creature you're like everyone everyone else just like block their creature for me like we have to get rid of dead i'm gonna go to please like double block or whatever you know what i mean like there are i think there are situations i'll give you a card right now if you help me out here i mean like normally that type of politicking doesn't exist in cdh but with this card like the option to give someone a card is i don't know i don't know now it matters it right? matters a lot more because now you can be like what you're giving him the card instead goad my creature like it actually brings up a lot of other conversations so this is another one that realistically i i am gonna give it a one i don't really think it'll see play but it's close enough that i'm thinking about it and i think some mad scientist brewer is gonna find a cool home for this one yeah i'm gonna give it a one i just don't think that giving my opponent's cards is ever something that i'm gonna want to do yeah and although this does Make infinite mana help you make infinite mana if you're going through an Isochron Scepter loop. Sure. I don't think it's... Well, you draw your opponent's cards each time. <laughs> <Sucks>. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, let's move on. All right, let's talk about Kellogg, Dangerous Mind. This is one of black and a red for a 3-2 legendary human mercenary with first strike and haste. When it attacks, you create a treasure and you can sacrifice five treasures. That's mag detects right there to gain control of target creature for as long as you control Kellogg, but you can only do that at sorcery speed. Yeah, so this one's kind of unique and interesting. It's worse than Magnus' ability for sure because you're not winning the game off of this activation. That's and just sorcery speed, yeah. And sorcery speed you know what i mean but i still i built this deck for our upcoming gameplay it's called gimme that and i like what it's doing it's a grindy rakdos deck that utilizes a lot of treasure makers that rakdos has been given a ton of recently so i'm playing things like zorn to double the treasures i'm playing things like strike it rich and playing things like grim hireling to get extra treasures spiteful banditry guild artisan yeah guild artisan is a great one this having what are its keywords again can you remind me first strike and haste it's pretty good so three mana right away tap attack make a treasure immediately the fact that it's like a three mana rock in your command zone it's a mana maker in the command zone it's really good in combat like That's given a good. first strike yeah, is the real first strike good is huge you're gonna be able to make sure that you can get through a lot i love that you just put magda in this deck. okay yeah why not it's just another way to make extra treasures go and then get your bolus of citadel oh you don't play bolus I cut of citadel. Bolus of citadel, but you can go get wishclaw talisman to find whatever you want that's basically bolus of right, citadel. same thing you can go get the one ring if you need to off of magda there's some questionable cards but for the most part this is just like a solid rakdos deck that has a, a higher than average am i playing mayhem devil i hope so did i just realize that i forgot that card is no you're playing mayhem okay, devil Phew. yeah Phew. That's the best i know one. this is a great mayhem devil deck so you're still winning with like dual caster mage heat shimmer type things that's like your main win condition uh, but it's just a little bit grindier than than some other decks you know what i mean so you can take the uh I don't know the stacks pieces that are holding your opponents back and make them. I don't know. You can you just turn them against stuff. them because turn now them you're them. beating them down. Like you're going on the aggressive. You're doing things that a lot of the other Rakdos decks aren't doing. Right. Which is pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. I think the deck is neat. It's probably not going to be a tier one or tier two deck. There's probably better Rakdos options, but Rakdos I think has been missing some girth in the command zone. All the yeah. decks are very fast. Girth is not the right word, but all the Rakdos options are very fast, and probably because what Rakdos offers is quick stuff. Um, but I think this is a strategy that if you want to be a little bit more slow, if you want to be a little bit more grindy, I like the option of having consistent mana and board control right there in the command zone. I do too. I can't wait to see this deck in action. Yeah, hopefully it does something. Hopefully I can take a curie and drop it of cards that's my that's my main <laughs> thought yeah me too and also like gaining control of something like a kinnon is like huge like it makes your treasures insane it Whoa! stops a kinnon player <laughs> like gaining control of a uh, timna and connecting for damage is or just huge. like any other commander specifically part, yeah any other like mana sync commander that's gonna let you use those treasures even more yeah exactly now there are like it's just if they just kill it the kellogg they're gonna get their thing back right so they have to waste removal but like how many removals are they gonna have you're gonna be able to re your treasure deck you're gonna you're make a bunch of treasures. silver shroud costume yes silver shroud costume <laughs> like you're gonna be able to recast your commander you're gonna try yeah. to take it again like they're eventually i don't know I, I haven't played it yet so i don't know how it'll play out but i think this card's almost something i'm gonna give it a three i'm gonna give it a three too it's i think it's like right there with curie where like this seems fun like this yeah. seems like a really interesting take on a color combination in cedh here that you don't really quite see often is but it good enough i don't know i don't know about any of this shit but i like it and its name is kellogg that's fun to say it's holding a little baby he's great all right raul the troubleshooter is one a black and a blue for a one four legendary creature human mutant rogue once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from among cards in your graveyard that were milled this turn, and you can tap it to mill each player a card. Time walk. It's a time walk. <laughs> tap it to time walk. Tap to time walk. Realistically, this is a scepter outlet. That's not a very great strategy anymore, but for a long time it was. There are still a bunch of Demir decks that use scepter as an outlet that are just like solid blue black lists that have dramatic scepter, isochron, and rev. rev. Isochron, scepter, and dramatic reversal. That's it. Yeah. I knew that was wrong. I just couldn't figure out how. That are using that as a win condition. Now, this you have to play it. Wait, untap, and then and then you can mill out and cast something. You mill your opponents out, and they'll die when they draw for turn. And even if your opponents are playing, like, Gitrog, and they have the Eldrazi Titans, yeah. you can still just go, oh, I have no library, Thassa's Oracle, I win the game. Right, yeah, because you mill your own library out when you do it? You do, and right. you can play a card that was milled, so even if it wasn't in your hand, you're just, it's basically tutoring for the win that for way. For the Thassa's Oracle or something like that. It has some halts, some things that it's not great at. The, the Summoning Sick, the only three mana, the no real card advantage, Advantage on its own in many ways vorhar might be a little bit better but in some ways this card is still pretty interesting i like that it stops top deck tutors that is an upside that we're always like don't 
consider that an upside because right. that never comes that up. It never comes up. But, but it, it's an upside. It's an upside. I also like this in a Bose Citadel Sensei's Divining Top shell, which this is. Yo, true. If your Sensei's Divining Top, sometimes you don't want to tap the top to draw the card, but you still want to get rid of that card. You don't want to see it. This one, you can mill that card and go through a little bit easier. It's helpful with the Bose Citadel. If you get stuck on a second land, just mill and keep going. It's a couple things. There's a couple things that it can do. Yeah, I think. there's some upsides. I mean, it's a Demir Commander. It's going to be all right. It's going to do some shit. Yeah. It's going to be cool. You meet the criteria to be a CEDH deck. Yeah. Are you the best CEDH deck in your colors? Maybe not. Probably Maybe not. not. But it's still, I like it. It's also good with like a uh, mnemonic patrol. Mill out all your opponents, and then when you mill out the mnemonic patrol, you cast there it. There you go. That's how you can guarantee the mnemonic patrol is going to be good. Right? Like, that's that's pretty good. There's some, like, very fun Demir-specific things that it does. It feeds graveyards, and it's and it's cool in that way. Um, it's I don't think it's better than Vohar. I think a two-mana creature is going to be better in the command zone than and this. And then Vohar yeah. can also do something right away. It's a looter, right? Ability. Vohar's a looter. So. Vohar is a looter, and then it also has the two-mana ability to cast something from the graveyard, too. So it can be something right away, which this can't. I still think this is close. I still think I'm going to give it a three. It's still going to feel like a CDH deck if you play it. So if you like love Fallout and you just want to play a CDH deck that's like a Fallout Commander, this one, will you'll probably win your fair share of games. Yeah, I would definitely say so too. I'm going to give it a 2.5 only because I think there's going to be a couple of better options for like that. Like if you're trying to just play a Fallout Commander in CEDH, I think there's some clear better options to go to, which we're going to talk about next. Okay, cool. So I'm going to say 2.5 for Raul. We're going to talk about the Master Transcendent next. One black, green, blue for a legendary artifact creature mutant. It's a 2-4. When it enters the battlefield, target player gets two rad counters, and you can tap it to put target creature card in a graveyard that was milled this turn onto the battlefield under your control, but it's a green mutant with base power and toughness 3-3. Three, three. Food chain. Food chain. Food chain wins games. So this does will, this. This will win games with food chains. Once you get your food chain and eternal scourge or mist Howl griffin in play or in exile, and you can create infinite creature loop mana with that loop. You can cast your commander and then exile out to food chain and then cast it again. And everyone will get infinite rad counters and mill out their whole library, right? Every time it enters, they mill two. They'll get two rad counters. They don't mill. So it's another one of these. You pass the turn and okay. then they go to their turn, mill their whole deck on their pre-combat main phase yeah. and then lose all the life. And that's why they die. They lose the life. For yep. each spell that they mill over, basically, they'll I lose a life for that. I had the same brain fart where I was like, wait a wait, minute. They've you already win? drawn their card for turn. Yeah. Now it's on ET ETB or attack, they get the counters? It's just on ETB. Just on ETB. And then the other ability, that tap ability, you're not going to be able to do anything with that like ever, right? This is one of those food chain commanders that you're never really going to want to cast until you're going off with food chain. So it's going to be very hard to reanimate creatures and have them be 3-3s three for you that are good. Can you read that tap ability for me one more time? Put target creature card in a graveyard that was milled this turn onto the battlefield under your control. As an instant speed, you may do this. Yes, you can do that instant speed, but again, it has to be milled this turn. Right. So theoretically, if you don't go for the win and you just enters, gives them two rad counters. Two rads. On they their mill. turn, they mill a creature. You go, you know, following turn. I'll take say, that, I'll take please. it, right? That's not going to happen often. That seems not Oh, good. that's true. This only works if you're consistently milling, consistently giving your opponents rad, because they're going to lose the rad counters by the time you actually get to tap it for the ability. Unless they mill two lands. If they mill two lands, I don't think they lose any life, but they don't lose any counters. All right, and the odds of that happening? Some mathematician will tell us very way low. low. Very yeah, low. Way low. So I think I like our other bug food chain outlet a lot better, which is why we didn't build this one. The other one from this set? Yes. Interesting. Tell me what the other one does. The other one is the Wise Mothman. Oh, I thought that's what we were talking about. Okay. Oh, What's no, the Wise we're Mothman talking do? about the Master Transcendent. Right, the Master. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the Wise Mothman. This is one, a black, a blue, a green, for a 3-3 three, three flyer that enters the battlefield and gives each player a rad counter. Whenever one or more non-land cards are milled, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to X target creatures, where X is the number of non-land cards milled this way. This is like the same thing? Except you can also mill yourself with rad too. You get you get a rad counter also. Yeah, it's each player gets a rad instead okay. of okay. So you of like buff your one team. player getting two rad. 
So you buff your team. You can you buff could, your like, team theoretically buff your team. Yeah. And this, it has flying, so like I would just rather have this as a beater in the command zone. Yeah, so like this is comparable to Ukuma and Kazur, Kazur yeah. right? Which is like the commander does nothing except it literally is the win condition. So if you demonic consultation away your Thassa's Oracle, doesn't matter. The win condition is in the command zone. The win, the actual win, not the facilitator. The closer is in the command zone. Exactly. Same thing as the last bug commander that we said, but like its second ability will like do stuff sometimes. And it flies, so it can block yeah, more th stuff. This one, I think the Wise Mothman is definitely the better way to go. Yeah, they're both roughly the same thing. They're both comparable for comparable to Ukuma and Kazur. Ukuma and Kazur allows you to be partners, which means you get to play one last card in your deck, which is like something. I would rather play 98 than 99. Me you just too, cut yeah. your worst card. This is a little bit, I would say, like more difficult to cast because it's like three pips. Now, if you're using it as just the outlet, that doesn't matter. But if you like, sometimes I, I have cast Kazur in the past. Card fucking sucks. Yeah, so this is going to be on the Ukuma beatdown plan. Right, like this card is going to be even harder to cast than Kazur is. I think it's probably close to Ukuma and Kazur. It doesn't also actually like... Like, your opponent still can win in their upkeep, and we're in, like, a born-upon-a-win world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they could still... And even after they mill, I guess if they mill, they'll lose the life, too. So, like, the endurance thing doesn't help. But, like, they could still born upon a win win in their upkeep, which doesn't feel as definitive to me as, like, Ukum and Kazur is a little bit more like you win right now or immediately. Immediately, Whereas, yeah. like, this one, you give your opponent's upkeep still, which is not great. And yeah. crop rotation for emergence zone or, you know, several other things could make this... Less good? I, I think, again, it's going to end up being a 2.5 for that reason. Yeah. Both of these commanders, because there already exists something else that's beyond this capability. I'm going to give it a solid 2.9. For both of them. Well, 2.9 and then 2.6 for the other one. And we have just one more card to talk about then. Final card. The Pip-Boy. The Pip-Boy 3000. Boy. Yeah. yeah. This is a one mana artifact equipment that uh, can equip for two mana. And when a Crypt creature attacks, you choose one. You can either sort your inventory, which is looting, drawing a card and discarding a card. It should say loot, though. You can pick a perk, which is putting a plus one, plus one counter on that creature. Or you can check your map, which is untapping two target lands. Couple things. This card reads bad, and I get it. Hear me out here. So this is kind of like a three mana artifact that taps for two right away. If you can pay one mana to cast, two mana to equip, and connect right away, if you have two lands to untap, that's two mana extra you get right now. That rate so far doesn't exist. Mana Crypt and Soul Ring do that, but there's no three mana rock that taps for two right away. There's some that have the ability to do it, Honor Ward, Shaku, or something like that, but that's a pretty good rate, and it's going to be worth including in some decks. Something like a Rograk deck, where you don't have to invest any initial mana, but you're gaining two mana per turn with it. I think it's going to be close. Stuff like Guild Artisan are things that I've liked in Rograk that are just like that one's two mana but this one's three total but you only invest it you know you can split up the mana so it's a little bit better so you're going to be kind of getting two a turn yeah. you have guy's cradle it gets nutty if you're playing francisco the plus one plus one counter will that be relevant matters. that's yeah. gonna matter okay. that's gonna be relevant and the fact that you can also when none of those other modes are good and you just want to like dig a little bit deeper you can loot too i don't know there's another colgan's command effect of just like it does everything at kind of a not good rate but it's, I think, closer than it seems. I it think doesn't this card have to close. deal combat damage. It, it just, just attacks, has to attack for right? one of these things to happen. So, like, the timing is weird. Like, with, with the mana, you can't then, like, dual caster mage win if you right. need the mana for that. So, like, you kind of have to play around it a little bit. But you're not wrong. This is Guild Artisan S. Right. This is... Kind of like Worn Power Stone esque. Like in an Arden deck, I think this is really good. And one, this is Soul Ring in an Arden's deck. I know it's not like as hyperbolic, obviously, but like this is going to be a one mana. Arden says it equips right away, so you yeah. just make that one mana, and then when you connect, you untap two lands. Normally. I mean, oftentimes you're going to have two lands. As long as the second turn on, normally yeah. most CDH decks can confidently hit their second land drop. So if you're doing this and you can't attack on your first turn with Arden anyway, so you have to wait for summoning sickness, like. I don't know. If a card that can sometimes feel like Soul Ring and then other times feel like uh, supercharged, what's the three mana artifact that comes in tap that taps for two? Worn Power Stone. Worn Power Stone. Sometimes yeah. it's going to feel like a supercharged Worn Power Stone. And then the flexibility of like, make my guy bigger, make, you know, loot a card, get yeah. my Razaketh into my graveyard. Like, it's, I, it's close. I think it's close. I think it's close. And I feel like the more Codsworths and the more inventory managements that we get, like, this is the kind of artifact equipment that we want. Like, something that's yes. going to give us utility, like an Umazawa's Jite, right? Something that has multiple different effects that are all going to be good at different points of the game it is kind of interesting that this is going to like feel like a jit a lot of the time now, it's kind of a 
legit. This like, is Umazawa's Jute. This is Umazawa's Jute, except like you have to do it immediately. Like you can't like save up your counters to That's be true. able to like give something minus six, minus six at some point. And the removal is by far the best part of Jit. Like the minus one counters are by far Way the best part. true. But like this ramps you. And making mana something we want like your commander to do more than we want your commander to remove things. So yes, and then also Urza Saga. This is one mana artifact. You Urza can Saga get it can with find. Urza Saga. Like wow, this card's completely free in an Arden deck off of Urza Saga. Right, as zero yeah. to equip, zero to get out. You just found it. I don't know. I think this card looks bad. And at first, I was like, okay, casual card. Maybe I'll put it in my Rafik deck. But the more I look at it, and if I go like this. I don't know. I think it's a card. I, I like this one. I'm, I'm interested what, yeah. in trying it out. I'm interested in trying it out specifically in Francisco, a deck that I already want a plus one, plus one counter. That lands thing is going to be relevant. I think all the modes are good for a Grixis Francisco deck for like Francisco Crom. So if there's anywhere I see that, it's that. It's Francisco Crom. It, it's specifically with the commanders Francisco uh, Rograk and Arden. If you're playing those commanders, I think this card is worth looking at. That makes this card like a three or a four on our scale. What, did we, what did we give the removal spell? The all the Royal X counters? I think we gave Nuclear Fallout a 3.5. 3.5. I, I think, think this, this is, is going to go lower than that. I think this is higher. I think that card is going to see play in only just Tivit. I think this card will see play in potentially upwards of two to three decks. So I'm going to give this card a three point. Okay. It's still not great though. So I'll like, give it a 3.7. Like, here's 3. the thing. 6. Like we're talking about all these things that sound really good and how it's a Coligan's command, but like it's also fighting for space in a fucking Grixis deck that has yes, no bad cards. High, yeah. No bad cards at all. So like it's hard to go. Man, I really don't want this really powerful card. I'm going to play Pip Boy 3000 instead. Yeah. Like that's that's a really tough decision to make. Yeah. That's I true. don't know if I can say this is going to be like better than Nuclear Fallout for that reason. I think it's on a same power level as Nuclear Fallout. If I give that one a 3.5, I'm going to I'm going to give this one a solidly a 3.5 with the potential of if this becomes a 4 and I see this a lot, I'm going to be like, "Ha, I knew it." Uh, and if it flops and does nothing, I'm going to be like, "Ha, I knew it." All right. Well, I'm going to go with a 2.5 <laughs> because 5, even okay. though we're talking about three decks that could play it, we're talking about three decks where I don't know how much is going to come up after the first week and a half that the set's released. Yeah, you might be right. So I don't, because I don't foresee the longevity being there, whereas Nuclear Fallout is going to have longevity until we just get a better languish. Yeah. Or a better toxic, another toxic deluge. So I got to put this at 2.5. I think... I agree with your with everything you're saying. I just I'm a little bit more confident in the card, but I 100% understand what you're saying. For me, the top three cards of the set are this one, Mr. Pip Boy. The what's the wrath called again? Nuclear Fallout. Nuclear Fallout. And I think the um the other equipment, the one that gives Shroud an unblockable. That other one, the Silver Shroud costume. Do I take that back? Yeah, that card's actually not great because I would just rather play a counter spell almost every single time. I would always rather play a counter spell or like have deflecting SWAT. So my top two Honestly, cards are those ones decks, that I said. A lot of decks can play bolt bend instead of this and another be card a better, I've been liking a lot yeah, recently. Be in a better position. So So I think we got two cards that will see play in some CDH deck. I think Mr. Pip Boy and the Nuclear Fallout, I think those cards will see play. Not a ton. We're not talking about the one ring and uh Lotho and Delighted Halfling, Born Upon a Win. I don't think quite that strength, but in that ballpark I, I wouldn't be surprised if these cards see a little play. Cool. Those are the cards. Those are all of the cards. Fallout seems sweet. Not a ton of CDH cards, but that's okay. I'm not bummed about that. No, I think me neither. The cards I... seem fun. They seem close to CDH, which is what I like, and they'll definitely make an impact in casual. Um, I'm, ex I'm excited for this set, even though I don't fucking know anything about Fallout. Cool. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Kajoy, Alex, Sean in the Ice, Mark Cirillo, SoCal Acura, Stormageddon, Luke Cook, AJ Alwasabi, Demon of Rosgrees, Peter Stewart, Uncle Butts, Kawaja A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby G. Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Big shout out to Dragon Shield for sponsoring the show. Use code playtowin5 at the affiliate link down below to help support the show. If you want to follow us on social media, you can do that on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Tyler Watson, Brian Barrington, Zachary Colson, Tyler AHX, Tyler the Tree X, Malcraft, Driving Crooner, Jabaha, Mace the Ace, Dalton Poteet, Hobo Ghost, Mitchell Shepard, Justin Mansolo, Pedro, Jacob Depp, Michael Ballou, Jan Wildfang, Thomas Bueno, and David Nelson.
but you can only spend that mana to cast aura or in, in blah, 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 blah. it's a grindy rack so it's a grindy rack so <clears throat> raxos rakdos rakdos it's a grindy rakdos dex why can't i say this